in the middle of World War II against the backdrop of an intricate political game, the most daring special forces operation of all time. September 1943. Benito Mussolini has been out of power for over a month. The former leader of Italy is imprisoned in an isolated hotel among the highest peaks of the Apennines of Abruzzo, 2,200 meters above sea level. These inaccessible mountains are about to be the setting for Operation Oak, an audacious raid with little chance of success to be carried out on a direct order from the Fuhrer, Adolf Hitler. Free Mussolini. Das erste war, tot oder lebendig sollte ich Mussolini nach Rom bringen. Now we have the true story of Operation Oak from the man who led the mission. Why have those involved remained in the shadows? Why didn't the Italians hand Mussolini over to the Anglo-Americans as promised? And could the tragic fate of Italy in World War II have been prevented? And why did the Germans publish this propaganda photograph rather than this other one? The answers to these questions lie concealed in unpublished pictures and documents that only now reveal the incredible truth. These include an extraordinary record of the main character, an audio recording found intact of the voice of Benito Mussolini. Ecco che nuovamente vi giunge la mia voce e sono sicuro che voi la riconoscete. A young police officer stood guard that day on the peak of the Gran Sasso mountain in Italy. He has never told anyone what he saw and heard until now. Nessuno di noi, né i tedeschi né noi, volevamo lo scontro a fuoco. At dawn on July the 10th, American and British troops invaded Sicily. The Italian campaign had begun. The most common reaction was joy at the end of the war. The Allied troops advanced while the Wehrmacht retreated to Catania. German paratroopers, the Fallschirmjäger, arrived on the island. They included the commander of those who would later free Mussolini, Harold Moors, who was only ever granted one television interview in his life. This one. Ich flog nach Catania, wurde in Catania von einem Storchflieger abgeholt, wurde auf genau der gleichen Weise sowohl hingebracht auf einer ganz kurzen Landefläche. The stork took off amazingly in just a few yards. Militarily and politically, Italy was on the verge of collapse. What could the country do? On the 19th of July 1943, a decisive meeting was held in northern Italy at Villa Gadja, which has passed into history as the Feltre meeting. It was Mussolini's last opportunity to tell Adolf Hitler that Italy could not continue with the war unless supported by German weapons and vehicles. Mussolini had promised his general staff that he would speak to the Fuhrer frankly and without fear. All the tension of that day shines out of these private, previously unpublished shots. Mussolini's eyes are concealed behind dark glasses. He does not yet know that that very morning hundreds of Allied bombers are airborne in the skies over Italy. And this time, their destination is Rome. The bombers encountered almost no opposition and struck densely populated areas. News of the bombing arrived when the meeting had already begun. Hitler spoke without interruption from the beginning, railing against Italian ineptitude. Motionless on the chair as you see him, Mussolini, Il Duce, listens in silence. Hearing news of the bombing, Hitler merely comments that Berlin is bombed every day. Mussolini returned to Rome in his private plane. He failed to tell the Fuhrer 
that Italy had to pull out of the war, nor did he get any help to resist. Shortly afterwards, he landed in the bombed capital of an empire that hardly existed any longer. He did not visit the affected areas. Mussolini's political journey was over. The Grand Council of Fascism, an advisory body that had not met in years, was convoked in Rome. Saturday, July the 24th, Il Duce climbed the stairs to his office in Palazzo Venezia. He still did not know that it was for the last time. At the end of a difficult meeting, in the early hours of Sunday, July the 25th, the Grand Council of Fascism voted in favour of a motion that in effect dismissed Mussolini and called on King Victor Emmanuel III to take power. A Rome still shrouded by night waited to see what would happen. The following day, Mussolini's car left from the garden of Villa Torlonia and arrived at Villa Savoia, the king's private residence. It was here that the meeting with the king took place. Everything was ready for his arrest. Il voto del Gran Consiglio è un atto legittimo. L'arresto di Mussolini è un atto di forza. È già accaduto in pace e in guerra che un ministro sia dimissionato e un comandante simulato. Il colpo di Stato non sta nel voto del Gran Consiglio, ma sta nell'arresto di Mussolini ricevuto a Villa Savoia da Vittorio Emanuele III, che pochi minuti prima che i carabinieri lo facciano salire sull'ambulanza, gli conferma la sua amicizia. Mussolini viene affiancato all'uscita da un ufficiale dei carabinieri che lo prende sotto braccio e lo porta verso un'ambulanza. Ma è un fatto unico nella storia che un uomo, il quale, come colui che gli parla, aveva per 21 anni servito il re con assoluta, dico assoluta lealtà, si è fatto arrestare sulla soglia della casa privata del re, costretto a salire su un'autoambulanza della Croce Rossa col pretesto di sottrarlo ad un complotto e condotto ad una velocità pazza, prima in una, poi in un'altra caserma dei carabinieri. The arrest was carried out in complete secrecy. Mussolini's final destination was the Carabinieri Cadet Barracks in Rome. The former Duce is handed a note stating that the action was for his own safety. Meanwhile, the news of the fall of Mussolini had officially crossed the Alps. Hitler reacted immediately. He had no doubts. Il Duce had to be freed immediately and brought to Germany. This was Operation Oak, Fall Eicher in German. Captain Otto Skorzeny's moment had arrived. Otto Skorzeny was a man very intelligent. He was a man who did not know the rules of morality. He was a narcissist, an adventurous, above any limit che coglie nella guerra e nel partito l'occasione per diventare una prima donna. In this top secret report, British intelligence draws an accurate profile of Scorzeni, describing him as a typical Nazi. Scorzeni owed his career in the SS to his friendship with one of the leaders, Ernst Kaltenbrunner, a former classmate. When they are alone, Adolf Hitler speaks of Mussolini in words almost identical to these from a rare recording of those days. That day, someone else was summoned to the Wolfschanze, General Kurt Student. Hitler was very clear. Kurt Student was heading the operation. Skorzeny was to follow the commands of no one but the general, one of the founders of the Fallschirmjäger, the paratroopers. The paratroopers were part of the air force, the Luftwaffe the Special Corps par excellence, the assault troops of the air. 
Several units immediately packed up and were transferred from the south of France to Italy, near Rome. On the 27th of July, a small German plane appeared in the sky over the Italian capital. Its passengers were General Student, and by his side, a man with the false identity of an Air Force captain, Scott Zenny. As soon as they landed in Rome, the two officers informed the head of the German secret police, SS officer Herbert Kapler, of their mission. Here, he is photographed leaving his Frascati headquarters. Kapler immediately called on his sources to find the answer to the most important question. Where is Benito Mussolini? The evening student and Scorzeni arrived in Rome, Mussolini was put in a car bound for the port of Gaeta. After midnight, a military ship set towards the archipelago of the Pontine Islands. Skirting one island, it sailed towards Ponza, where certain political prisoners were being held. Some of them were astonished to see the ex-dictator on the terrace of a semi-abandoned house. Despite the secrecy supposedly surrounding his presence, the bureaucracy was relentless. Here is the ration card issued for Benito Mussolini. After 10 days, Ponza was no longer considered safe and no one wanted to take a risk. Mussolini could play an important part in the secret negotiations for the armistice taking place with Britain and America. Aboard the destroyer Panther, even Mussolini realized this. Dalla Maddalena al Gran Sasso, che il piano progettato contemplava la consegna della mia persona al nemico. The new place of detention was the Sardinian island of La Maddalena. In an isolated building overlooking the sea, well protected by rocks and a pine wood, Villa Weber. Numerous carabinieri stood guard. German spies had quickly reconstructed the phases of Mussolini's arrest, but had then come up against a brick wall. The Italian secret services managed to put them off the scent. Then, in the hot Roman August, a report arrived. Herbert Kapler read it. This was a rumor of someone being held on La Maddalena, reported by a Navy captain. Similar reports had been received, but Kapler believed this time they were on the right track. He passed the hint on to Skorzeny, who rushed to the island with his man, Robert Varga. Dressed in a sailor's uniform, as in this photograph, Varga talked to the locals in his perfect Italian. Then, disguised as a greengrocer, he delivered a box to the house and saw a man on the terrace, Il Duce. The next day, Skorzeny and Varga boarded a Henkel 111 and took off on a reconnaissance of La Maddalena. Scorzeni claims that near the island an enemy aircraft hit them. Others speak of a breakdown, but the result was an unplanned landing at sea. They were saved by the Italian Royal Navy. The two managed to hide the true purpose of their mission, to prepare Mussolini's escape. Scorzeni quickly developed a plan for a bold assault, but on the chosen day, before the German forces began landing, Varga, once more disguised as a sailor, went to the gate of Villa Weber and made a sensational discovery. There was nobody there. Once more, the Italians were one step ahead of them. That morning, a seaplane with a Red Cross insignia took off from the island. After an uneventful flight, it lands on Lake Bracciano while an air raid siren is sounding. This was a ploy to make the German soldiers guarding the seaplane base at Vigna di Valle run for cover. From the large plane emerged Benito Mussolini. Waiting for him on the jetty was a royal police inspector, Giuseppe Guelli. From now on, he was responsible for the prisoner. Twenty-four hours earlier, Officers of the Monte Mario Commissariat had been summoned. A superior officer addressed them. The 
disse, mi occorrono 20 volontari per una missione speciale, alzino la mano, io ero uno dei primi, non lo so perché. They were ordered to leave immediately. Si prese la via salaria, a un certo punto si inoltrò un po' la montagna, c'era uno di noi che si vede che era abruzzese, disse, ma qui andiamo in Abruzzo. Andammo direttamente a Sergi, alla base della funiglia. The cable car was operating normally when the officers arrived there at the end of August 1943. Notai che vicino al capannone c'era una villetta, circa 100 metri così, e c'erano dei carabinieri a questa villetta. C'era un boschetto intorno. A un certo punto arrivò un'ambulanza scortata da carabinieri, la bonazza si apre e scende Mussolini, voilà, e va direttamente dentro a questa villetta accompagnato da, da due carabinieri. The prisoner the police officers saw getting out of the ambulance bore little resemblance to the star of fascist propaganda films. Meanwhile, in Rome, they were closely watching the situation on the Gran Sasso and a few days later an order arrived from the capital. Noi andammo su il 2 settembre e ci dicono che c'era pericolo che arrivassero gli inglesi, i fascisti o i tedeschi. E allora bisogna andare su che siamo sicuri. The new prison was to be the Hotel Campo Imperatore, 2,200 meters above sea level. Its location made it virtually impregnable if properly defended. Protected from behind by high mountains with a clear view in every direction, any threat by land would be spotted well in advance and the prisoner immediately secured. C'erano 4 o 5 uh, agenti o carabinieri intorno, tutto intorno all'albergo, a circa 200 metri. In this photo you can see the ski instructor Domenico Antonelli his presence leaves open the possibility of a plan to help Mussolini escape along mountain paths in case of attack. Although a phrase heard by the hotel secretary and reported in the minutes of the interrogation leaves no doubt. The instructions were not to hand over Mussolini alive to anyone, rather to kill him. In Rome, the Germans came into possession of the codes to decrypt messages to and from the Italian Home Office. On September the 6th, Kapler struck gold. He intercepted a message from Guerli calling Campo Imperatore an impregnable fortress. But the winds of history were about to sweep over everyone with unprecedented strength. The American General Eisenhower at 1830 on the 8th of September read this communique on Radio Algiers. The Italian government has surrendered its armed forces unconditionally. As Allied Commander-in-Chief, I have granted a military armistice. The armistice was signed by my representative and the representative of Marshal Badoglio, and it becomes effective this instant. Italy had collapsed. Most of the armed forces, starting with the high command, simply faded away. Many soldiers surrendered. Others tried to reach home. Few remained at their posts. The days of the signing of the Pact of Steel with Nazi Germany seemed far away. The next day, before lashing out at Italian treachery, Hitler spoke of Mussolini. Mussolini wollte noch in letzter Minute die heimtückischen Feinde des italienischen Volkes im Kampf um sein oder nicht sein ausschalten. Und damit Italiens Zukunft sicherzustellen. Der Schmerz der mich persönlich erfasste, angesichts des historisch einmaligen Unrechts, das mir diesen Mann angetan hat, seine entwürdigende Behandlung, die ihn, der da 20 Jahre lang nur der eine Sorge für sein Volk lebte, nun in die Ebene eines gemeinen Verbrechers abstieß, ist verständlich. Ich war und bin glücklich, diesen großen und treuen Mann als meinen Freund bezeichnen zu dürfen. Rome was abandoned and events rapidly took their course. This footage shows the fighting in the southwest of the city, in which paratroopers themselves were involved. 
By September the 10th, the battle for Rome was virtually over and the Germans converged on the centre, disarming the Italian troops. What orders had been left regarding the detention of Mussolini? To find out, the German police picked up the police general Fernando Soletti and brought him before the man responsible for the liberation of Mussolini, General Kurt Student. The Italian officer claimed he knew nothing. Before letting him go, Student showed him a photo. This is the photograph, which was believed destroyed in the bombing. Instead, it is now in the possession of the Moors family. It is the result of the daring reconnaissance of Captain Gerhard Langut, who we see here examining a map of Italy. On 8th of September, Langut had taken off with Skorzeny. Together they had carried out a reconnaissance without even the pilot knowing the real target. In order to conceal it, they first flew along the coast and only passed over the mountains in the area of Campo Imperatore on the return flight. Their aerial photograph does not reveal much except the clear silhouette of the hotel. Then the secret police chief in Rome, Kapler, ordered his right-hand man, Lieutenant Eric Pribke, to go to the base of the cable car at a Sergi. Pribke returned with confirmation. Mussolini was being held in the hotel at Campo Imperatore. In fact, the prisoner was housed in room 201. He was allowed to listen to the radio and so he knew about the armistice and, he said, the clause stating that he was to be handed over to the Allies. So he took a drastic decision. In this room, still today decorated with furniture of the time, he grabbed a razor blade and tried to cut his wrists. He was immediately rescued by the military guard. The wounds were superficial and the former Duce was not in any danger. Major Moores commanded a battalion of hand-picked paratroopers. On the afternoon of September the 11th, he was with General Student. Er begrüßte mich freundlich und sagte auf sogenannten nüchtern, nüchtern Magen zu mir, morgen früh um sieben werden sie Mussolini auf dem Gran Sasso befreien. Er hat zwei ganz wichtige Dinge zu mir gesagt, die mir sehr eindringlich haften geblieben sind und natürlich den Verlauf der Unternehmung mit beeinflusst haben. Das erste war tot oder lebendig sollte ich Mussolini nach Rom bringen. Und das zweite war, der Führer schaut auf die Fallschirmtruppe und hat volles Vertrauen zu ihr. Es darf unter keinen Umständen schief gehen. General Student wanted to parachute the men into the area at the base of the Asergi cable car. Der Vorschlag mit zwei Kompanien mit Fallschirmen auf einem Hochplateau bei Assergi im Tal abgesetzt zu werden, gefiel mir aus drei Gründen nicht. First, the plateau below was visible from the Campo Imperatore, so the attack could not count on the surprise factor. From above it would be easy to defend themselves and meanwhile take Il Duce away along some path or worse, kill him. Secondly, the Paras would have to climb a thousand meters carrying weapons and equipment under fire from an enemy placed in an ideal position. Finally, if they succeeded, there was another detail that could not be ignored. Das dritte Argument war aber auch wichtig, denn wenn wir mit Falschung abgesetzt worden wären, hätten wir für den Rückweg ja keine Transportmittel gehabt. Wir hätten also eine Transportkolonne 
ohnehin nach Assergi kommandieren müssen, die uns also dann wieder nach Rom zurückbringt. Diese Konstruktion gefiel mir nicht. Ich However, what Moors did not know was that there was a group of dog handlers on the Gran Sasso with German shepherd dogs that could even at night identify attackers climbing the slopes. The defense was further reinforced by two heavy machine guns. Back at Frascati, at the Mondragoni College where his men were waiting, Moors had to prepare a better plan to free Il Duce. All he had was an aerial photograph and a booklet on the Gran Sasso cable car. And he had only one hour. Aber deswegen vorgeschlagen, mit einer Kompanie auf Lastenseglern unmittelbar neben dem Hotel zu landen. Es erschien mir dann wichtig, die Operation durch eine Marschgruppe zu unterstützen, gegebenenfalls herauszuhauen. Dieser Vorschlag ist von Generaloberstudent vollständig angenommen worden und ist dann auch bis auf eine Ausnahme so durchgeführt worden. The exception had to do with Scott Senny. His mission was officially over, but the captain was in contact with the head of the SS, Heinrich Himmler, and neither wanted to miss an historic opportunity. Skorzeny was a mere observer because it was Lieutenant Georg von Berlepsch who was in charge of the gliders. At dawn on September the 12th, Moors' men who were providing the land support got into their trucks. They approached the Abruzzi mountains. Information regarding the presence of Italian troops forced them to change their route while the air assault troops prepared. ist auf dem Flugplatz Pratica di Mare ein hoher Generalstab eingetroffen, unter anderem auch General Oberst Kurt Student. The photographers captured the moment before they took off for an operation full of unknowns. Almost none of the men taking part knew the identity of the man they were going to attempt to free, although some had guessed. Mussolini's name was not uttered until the gliders were airborne. This photo shows student personally giving final instructions to the officers in charge. In his report, Morse describes the column's progress, in part using seized Italian vehicles. He was worried about not arriving in time to seize the base of the cable car. The soldiers were covered in dust from the winding roads, but had not yet come across any serious problems. At that moment, at the cable car station, the prefect of L'Aquila, the nearest town to Mussolini's prison, was meeting the man in charge of the guard, Inspector Guerli, and telling him about German troops heading their way. Later, he called to read him a radiogram that had just arrived from Rome. It was a message from the head of the Italian police that perhaps changed the course of Italian history. Raccomandate, Ispettore Reale Gueli, massima prudenza. The phrase had a coded meaning. The order to kill Mussolini had been revoked. They were to let him go. Meanwhile, something was happening at Pratica di Mare Airport. Plötzlich hörten wir Fliegeralarm, eine Bomberstaffel kam über Rom geflogen, glücklicherweise kein Einsatz auf unser Flugplatz Pratica di Mare, sondern weiter weg ins Landesinnere. Daraufhin starteten wir zum Einsatz. The gliders were towed up into the clear sky. It is just after Sunday lunch. 
According to German documents, the time was chosen deliberately. In the words of Mussolini, C'era nell'aria limpida, attorno alla imponente cima del monte, una specie di aspettazione. Sentì un grande rumore di aerei. Io, quando sentì il rumore, ho detto, ma che si sta bombardando? Qui c'è un bombardamento inglese, secondo me, e qua bisogna scappare. Apri la finestra, invece, non era un bombardamento. It was the planes towing the gliders. A photograph taken right after the release. The gliders riding the air currents. And this was a lautloses fliegen. Ohne höchstes Luftgeräusche. Luftverschnitten war und wir liegen ja auch nur zehn Minuten, fünf bis zehn Minuten ohne Schlepp über dem Gran Sasso. Als wir Gran Sasso näher hatten, wurden die Schlepptauer abgeworfen und dann kamen die Segelflugzeuge, segelten dann an ihren Stellen da. A vision of large birds with rigid wings appeared above the hotel. Erano le 14 quando vedo atterrare il primo aliante. Poi successivamente altri e quindi squadre di uomini avanzavano verso il rifugio decisi a aspettare qualsiasi resistenza. Wir sind dahinter gelandet also auf der Rückseite von uh von dem Hotel, das ja diese, diese Apsis noch hat. Aber da bin ich Guard on shot. Armed soldiers in camouflage jumped off the roofs and the bellies of the gliders. Some approached cautiously. Others flattened themselves on the ground without cover. They saw Panuti appear at the window. E due eh, parà vicini che appena mi diedero, tac, mi puntarono subito il fucile. Ma non spararono. The young policeman was amazed to see an Italian police general shouting. E vedo il generale Soletti con le mani alzate faceva Non sparate, non sparate, non sparate! Behind Soletti was Scott Zeni. Io rimasi imbambolato sotto la minaccia di questi due fucili e questo generale disperato era, perché lei sa che significa in guerra, basta una fucilata si scatena la fucileria. A key image. A paratrooper is telling his men to keep calm while an Italian soldier in front of him watches them advance, keeping his rifle on his shoulder. Und ich bin dann über die Mauer gestiegen, da ist ein Geländer drauf gewesen. Und war, da stand dann vorm, vorm Hotel-Eingang, ein paar italienische Soldaten standen da und es war sonst niemand da. E allora dico, che faccio? Non sapevo che fare. Io, io, prendo il mio mitra, me lo metto a tracolla, scendo. Schmidt helped Scorzeni over the wall. Ich habe mich gebückt, damit er mir auf meinen Rücken steigen konnte und damit er drüber kam. Er war ja ein ziemlich schwerer Mann. Wir sahen den Dutsche, wir nennen ihn mal nach wie vor so, ja. Äh, am Fenster, der hat geguckt und äh, was er sich gedacht hat, weiß ich nicht. Ja. Aber wir wussten, dass er, wenn er am Fenster war, irgendwie gefährdet ist, ja. Von seinem Zimmer aus, glaube ich, war zweiter Stock. Und wir haben halt geworfen, Dutsche zum Kopf weg. Weil wir immer befürchtet haben, es würde jemand auf ihn schießen. Es sono sceso. E anche scendevano gli altri. E siamo usciti sul piazzale. Alcuni di noi erano già lì sul piazzale. 
col, regolarmente col fucile, alla, sia carabinieri sia a, a spalla. E siamo andati sul passare. Ich bin zwar der, der erste Fallschirmjäger gewesen, der dort war und der auch ins Hotel reinkam. Ein italienischer Soldat, der am Eingang stand, hat mich gefragt, so viel Italiener, Italienisch habe ich verstanden, dass er mir die Kamera, also das Zimmer vom Duce zeigen wollte, mich hinführen wollte. Aber ich wusste auch, dass ich nicht den Befehl habe, ja, da reinzugehen. Und äh, bin dann halt vor dem Haus geblieben. Nei tedeschi, né noi, volevamo lo scontro a fuoco. Also jedenfalls, jedenfalls war kein Befehl, da hatten die keinen Befehl zu schießen, um jeden Preis. Die hätten ja auch einen Befehl haben können, dass sie den Mussolini im letzten Moment erschießen. Ja? Hätten sie auch haben können, aber das war alles nicht der Fall. Non valeva la pena fare un massacro per Mussolini. An, an Schießerei oder sowas überhaupt kein Mensch gedacht. Und es wurde auch nicht geschossen. With incredible timing, the land troops arrived down in the valley, just as they could see the gliders fall onto Campo Imperatore. But what about Mussolini? Dann, dann kam nach einer Weile auch das Scorzeni. Und der wusste ja genau, was er wollte, ja, also was er sollte. Und hat uns auch aus dem Hotel rausgewiesen. Also drin sollten wir falschen Wege nicht sein. Scorzeni disobeyed students' orders, took control of the situation and rushed into Il Duce's room. From that moment on, he never left him. It was 1417 when the two words were pronounced over the radio, mission accomplished. An astonished Moors asked, dead or alive? On hearing the response, he cheered. Mussolini was escorted outside. Das waren die Offiziere, die ihn begleitet haben und die mit ihm auch rausgegangen sind. Sie wissen ja, er hatte Zivil an, er hat einen Mantel an, er hat einen Hut auf. Und wir hatten den Eindruck, dass er ein, ein stiller, nicht ganz gesunder Mann ist. Il Duce appears with a strained smile on his haggard face. Then he makes a surprising gesture, this. He makes room for himself to take center stage. The photos hardly convey the image of a battlefield. Moores recalls students' words. Der Hauptmann Gerlach kann dann mit dem Storch auf dem Campo Imperatore landen und gebe ihnen ein zweites Flugzeug mit für Scorzeni, denn der Scorzeni soll dann den Duce zum Führer begleiten. But the second aircraft was damaged during the landing in the valley, whereas Gerlach landed unharmed. Aber erst als die Sache klar war, dass äh, Mussolini in deutschen Händen ist, also so befreit ist und dass es klappen würde, dann ist der Fieseler Storch gelandet. The ex-prisoner headed towards the small plane while the scene was continually photographed. Scorzeni was always at his side, as were General Soletti and Inspector Guerli. The Italians probably thought that as long as they stayed close to him, the Germans would not do anything against them. Perhaps this is the moment when Scorzeni talked to Mussolini, who told Soletti and Guerli that they too were going to be taken to Germany. The moments that followed would be discussed for decades. Scorzeni walked forward und hat sich sehr gedrängt mitzufliegen dieses wäre ohne meine und Gerlachs Genehmigung niemals geschehen und ich hätte da er mir ja unterstellt war ohne weiteres sagen können mein lieber Scorzeni daraus wird nichts 
Ich hatte aber den ausdrücklichen Befehl von Generaloberstudent, ihn nicht alleine fliegen zu lassen. Morse and the pilot Gerlach talk. Skorzeny is allowed on board to accompany Il Duce and prevents depriving the paratroopers of an officer. Nobody imagined that this decision would change the way history viewed that day. Skorzeny squeezed in behind Mussolini. He probably already knew what he was going to do when they landed. Er ist absolut mit dem Einverständnis von mir und mit der Genehmigung des Kommandanten des Flugzeugs, Hauptmann Gerlach, mitgeflogen. Would Gerlach manage to gain height in the thin air at 2,000 meters above sea level, carrying the extra weight of Scott Zenny, who weighed over 100 kilos? Here's the takeoff. He's made it. The photo shows them passing over the hotel after a long turn. The stork disappears down the mountain. Soon, those on board can see the sea. The reckless landing described by Skorzeny is not confirmed by the images. Mussolini immediately understood the importance of what had just happened. Questa impresa rivelatrice della organizzazione dello spirito di iniziativa e della decisione tedesca rimarrà memorabile nella storia della guerra. Col tempo diventerà leggendaria. This twin-engined Heinkel was waiting for him at Pratica di Mare Airport. It was Monday, September the 13th. A plane landed in Munich. Benito Mussolini walked down the steps. Adolf Hitler gave him a prolonged handshake. He then let Vittorio Mussolini greet his father. In this frame we see Skorzeny, who is already wearing the Ritterkreuz medal on his chest. Next to Hitler walks Skorzeny and Ernst Kaltenbrunner, his superior and former classmate. This clearly shows how the SS took credit for the success, ignoring the role of the paratroopers. Only photos of Operation Oak where Skorzeny is present would be published. Skorzeny enjoys the title of liberator of Il Duce to this day, despite the fact that the importance of his role was questioned immediately. But the Nazis needed someone to act as a symbol, with tales of gun battles, bloody losses and amazing acts of courage on the Grand Sasso. In the much less prestigious setting of the Alban Hills, General Student awarded medals to the paratroopers. Morse asked several times for the true version of events to be established he was suddenly transferred to the Russian front. When he raised the issue again, he received a call from the Führer's headquarters. Sind Sie der Major Mors? Sag ja wohl, Herr Oberst. Ich habe Ihnen mitzuteilen, dass diese Art der Berichterstattung vom Führer persönlich befohlen worden ist, um vor aller Welt darzustellen, dass er bereit gewesen ist, für seinen Freund Mussolini wertvollstes deutsches Soldatenblut zu opfern. Haben Sie mich verstanden? Jawohl, Herr Oberst. Herr Ritter, Herr Oberst. In Munich, after kissing his son Vittorio, Mussolini is about to be told of German plans for his immediate future and that of Italy. Foreign Minister Ribbentrop comes to meet him. Inside is Field Marshal Hermann Göring, who welcomes him cordially. Finally, the moment of the meeting behind closed doors with Adolf Hitler. Here we see them at the exit. Mussolini's gestures betray a certain embarrassment. He is still wearing the blue coat Inspector Guelli lent him. His request to be taken first to his family at Rocca delle Caminate and then to Hitler 
has been completely ignored. The 18 months following this meeting were one of the bloodiest and most tragic periods in Italian history. One of the eyewitnesses to these moments was Rachele Mussolini, Mussolini's wife, who had flown in with their children. Later she would describe her personal impressions in these never before heard words. Devo dire per personalmente che il fuoco voleva bene il dolce. Io l'ho vista quando l'hanno liberato e che l'hanno portato giù a lì a Monaco che io ero lassù quando lo portarono. Cioè l'ha sempre l'ha voluto bene. Rachele was witness to how much this personal affection weighed very little on the Führer's decisions regarding Italy. This is one of the last images of Mussolini alive, taken almost two years after Operation Oak. According to some, he really did not want to be liberated by the Germans at Gran Sasso. What he would have preferred, we'll never know. Campo Imperatore has today once again become a place for skiers and hikers. This majestic scenery that was the backdrop to one of the most dramatic exploits of the Second World War.